Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 7th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, where does old ransomware go to die? Turns out it doesn't die, it just gets modified. Xavier ran into a new version of FT Code. FT Code first surfaced in 2013, and probably because it's written in PowerShell, which makes it somewhat easy for an attacker to grab the old code, modify it, and re-release it. That's probably why we sort of see this particular ransomware coming back over the last few years. This latest version has some fairly interesting obfuscation techniques up its sleeves. So Xavier walks you through how to obfuscate this particular sample. For persistence, it uses a scheduled task. Now, one modification compared to uh, the original code is that it keeps randomizing its extension. Not 100% sure why they do that, but maybe they want to delay the detection of the ransomware. Often just by looking for files with a certain extension, you kind of know what kind uh, that you are infected with a ransomware. Maybe some of the anti-malware tools have sort of picked up on that, and that's why they are randomizing the extension. Let me have a little bit of catch up to do on a couple of things that came up earlier this week. One story is about Windows Defender and how it monitors the hosts file. The host file is used for hostname resolution. So if you're going to google.com, the system will first check the host file if an IP address is listed for that hostname. And if not, which is usually the case, it will do its DNS lookup using an external DNS server. So the host file can be used to essentially overwrite the IP addresses for different host names. And that can be used, well, like so many things, either beneficial or maliciously. On the malicious side, malware, for example, may modify the host file to prevent you from downloading antivirus updates by just pointing the host name for the antivirus update to a host name that doesn't exist or to an IP address that doesn't exist. On the beneficial side, uh, there are some users that, for example, take a list of malicious domains or adware domains more commonly and then point them to some kind of sinkhole or just localhost to prevent uh, their system from connecting to any of these sites. So anti-malware has already been monitoring this host file, but as of often, most of the time it just looks for known specific malicious entries. Windows Defender apparently is now going a little bit further and according to some users, a little bit too far. What they're looking for is if any of the host names that Microsoft uses for its telemetry or like some users may be saying to spy on you, well, uh, if you modify these host names, then this is also flagged as malicious and maybe undone by Windows Defender. One indicator of the problem is that if you edit your host file and do add manually an entry that posts one of the Microsoft domains to an invalid IP address, it will be flagged as malicious and you will not be able to save uh, this host file. And Pelle Carter and Tomer Barr, two security researchers from SafeBreach Labs uh, today gave a talk at Black Hat USA with sort of an update of a vulnerability found a while ago. The vulnerability is CVE 2020-1048. And Microsoft did fix this vulnerability originally in May, but apparently didn't fix it quite right. And these researchers now came up with a workaround that will still make the system exploitable, even if the patch is installed. But their larger message really is that the Windows Print Spooler is still one of those often overlooked weak points in the system. It does run a system, so any exploit 
is critical and allows uh, full access uh, to the system. And then they also point out that, well, uh, going back 10 years in 2010, Stuxnet actually uh, took advantage, apparently, of a similar vulnerability. And according to these researchers, uh, the actual code of the Microsoft Print Spooler has not really changed at all over the last 20 years. Well, and thanks again for listening. And remember, next week, it's Microsoft's Patch Tuesday and uh, probably a couple other big patches as well. So uh, take some rest this weekend and uh, get ready for another week of exciting patches uh, probably coming up. If you like this podcast, uh, please, please tell your friends about it, post about it, and leave good comments on various podcast sites wherever you happen to download this podcast from. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.